Greetings folks and welcome back to another video on how to program a Discord Python bot. So today we are going to program a meme generator. That's right. So we want to program something where you can just write generate meme. Then the name of the meme, let's say one does not simply. And then one does not simply make a funny meme. And there we go. So that's what we want to do today. Now you could type another name. So instead of one does not simply, you could type, let's say, you could type this instead and you would get something else. So you can basically type in what you want in the top text and what you want in the bottom text of the meme of your choosing. So that's what we want to do today. So let's take a look. Okay. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So I've written this script, and instead of writing it all out in this video, I thought I'd go through it and explain what's going on. And then you can just, you know, grab the script if you want, adapt it however you want as well, and use it yourself. So, yeah. But let's get back to that in a minute. Let's just, you know, import it and use it, which is very simple to do. So if you have that script, you can just import it like so. So from meme generator, import meme generator, that's the name of the class. And then let's make a command. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then let's make the command down here. So as usual, add client.command. And let's also give it an alias. I talked about this in another video you can check out if you want. So you can write meme, but what I want to call the function is generate meme. Okay, it takes a context and then we want to trade uh, and then we want to take three arguments. So the first argument is the meme name. Now this doesn't have to match exactly. That's one of the nice things about this, uh, I think. But uh, let me show you what I mean in a minute. And we want the top text. And let's just say, you know, default is just uh, nothing, like the empty string. So you're not, you don't have to specify anything. Uh, bottom text is just per default. It's also just the empty string. Okay, let's instantiate the class. So not mean name, mean generator is equal to mean generator. And then what we do, how to like the way we use it, is that we call, well, go figure, generate meme. We give it the name, and we give the top text. And can you guess it? Well, we get the uh, we also give it the bottom text. There you go. Okay, and what this does, this generate meme function is it will essentially take the meme and generate this file right here memes edited.jpg so if we go back we can simply send this file to discord and the way we do that is context.send and then it takes an argument which is file so file is equal to discord.file and then we want to give them like the uh, path to the image we want to upload. You can also upload a different uh, like type of, uh, of file. It doesn't have to be uh, an image, but in this case, we want an image. So meme generator dot memes folder path plus, and then meme edited dot jpeg, because this is what the file will always be named. Uh, so by the way, this, um, folder path is also something specified in the meme generator it just says okay well it's in the assets folder and then within the assets folder it's in the memes subfolder so these folders are something you will have to create but I'll get back to that in a minute so that's all you have to do in the bot channel itself and uh, not channel like script I should say and then you just need the the script as well and you can find this on GitHub if you want to use it, or you can write it out yourself. So yeah, let's let's take a look at what it actually does and how it actually works. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So just starting with the generate meme function, which is what we called in the other script, like just before. Um, this meme name doesn't have to match exact, and the reason why is that we pass it along into get closest matching meme file name. So this utility function, if we go up to this, it just takes the meme name which is a string. And then we use this get close matches function, which is part of the diff lib 
module in Python. This is pre-installed when you install Python, I think. So you don't even have to install it, just use it. And this has a guess, uh, get close matches function, which takes a, like a, an object, in this case a string, um, and an iterable, in this case a list of strings. And then we also specify how many close matches we want. We just want one. And we specify this cutoff. The cutoff is a parameter that tells this function how sort of um, how much you accept. So like yeah, how close does it have to be uh, this string uh, to an element in this iterable before it actually is sort of you know counted as a close match, if you will. So if you put this n higher, you could get more close matches. But this cutoff would also determine how many you would actually uh, have. So n is just the maximum, I think. Okay, so this get all mean names is also a utility function, which just uh, goes into this folder, this subfolder memes. This is where we have all the images of the memes that you can actually use. So currently, you only have three. One is not simply, which we used, and also x x everywhere, which we also used, and then this one. But you can, of course, like download more. You just have to download the meme file put it in within this folder and uh, yeah I can actually show you at the end of the video how to do that quite easily but yeah like I said this function simply just goes in within the folder and finds all these names not the extension just the name returns it so what we end up with is that we use this get close matches function to find the meme that looks the most like the meme that the user tried to sort of use so you could also write one does instead of one does not simply uh, like we did and it should still work it should still be quite close to this one does not simply um, element in this folder which is in this list like uh, also you could write the uh, interesting man or in the world or um, x everywhere let's say you don't even have to specify these dashes like i like i showed you as well it's quite neat like uh, a neat way to to find the closest match Okay, if we cannot find anything, we just raise, a, raise an exception. Okay, so that's how this works. So we get the actual file name. And once we have the file name, we can actually load in the image and actually draw on it and draw the text. And that's what we do next. So we get the path here from the name. Then we open the image using uh, the module called pillow. So like you see here, from PIL, we import this. So this is something you would need to install. So let's actually, uh, let me just show you how to do that. So in your virtual environment or whatever, where you are, um, you just run right uh, pip install pillar like this. And uh, that's it. So then you get access to, to these uh, objects here, which is what we use to draw on the image. So we open the image, we get an object here, we compute the width and the height, we compute the margin. We also want a margin like for the meme. We don't just want uh, this text to be all the way to the top. Um, okay, so we compute this based on the image size. So that's a very important aspect, by the way. We want this to be sort of, you know, it should work with all the image sizes. Like this meme image is much smaller than this one. Oh, like this one, let's say. This one is much larger. This one has a different format. It's taller than it's wide as well. So these are things we need to uh, consider. All right, so next we draw on the image. So we call image draw dot draw and give it the image object. Okay. And then we call this uh, draw text function, uh, which is something that I have written. So let's go and uh, take a look at this. All right, so here it is. So I just specify some constants up here. Um, we have it a full font size, but this is something we want to adjust depending on the size of the image. So what I uh, did was to, I wrote this compute draw info utility function where we, um, we compute this information. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so we load the font here and you can use whatever font you want, but usually when you see a meme on, on the internet, it's always this uh, impact uh, font. And this is something that you can uh, grab yourself. I can show you how to do that. Uh, if you have Windows, it's already installed. So it's quite easy to 
to get, but uh, you need to navigate, find the file, put it in this folder. This just makes it more convenient and the project more self-contained. Okay, so we load this font and then we get the size of the text. So the text is what we wanted to draw. So this could, for instance, be one does not simply, let's say. So we compute the width of the text and we compute the, uh, the, the amount of pixels that it takes and sort of um, look at how many lines we should, should use to make this look reasonable. We use this text wrap um, function here, which is also oh, like module, which is also part of Python already. So it's quite neat. You can compute how many lines you will get um, uh, if you want to wrap the text with a certain width. Okay. Yeah, well, this is the number of lines. That's the net, like the length of this list. And then we compute the total height of the text. And obviously, if we go back and look here, okay, this is maybe not the best example. Okay, so let me actually try to come up with an example where we can see this. All right, so as you can see, uh, it does wrap uh, down here. So, so yeah. Uh, like there is some spacing here. It's not a lot, granted, but there is some text, uh, like some some uh, some spacing. So we can compute the height of the text by saying, okay, the height here times the number of lines, but also plus the number of uh, gaps in between. So that's what we uh, what we do. So let's go back uh, if I can do that. Okay, and then we want to recurse. So. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it's it's a simple way and it works quite well, I think. So if the text is too large or if it's too small, then we just try to compute the draw info again. We do this iteratively until it satisfies our constraint specified by these constants up here. And this is just something I chose based on a bit of trial and error, something that looks uh, relatively reasonable. Like we don't want the text to be insanely small it could, like in, in theory this could fit on one line right it could be on one line but the text would have to be very very small so we need to find sort of a compromise between the number of lines not being too great and the font size not being too uh, too small so so yeah okay uh, once we've computed this draw info we get it back here, like we get the font object, we get the font size, the number of lines, and the height here. And then we just want to compute where should we draw this text. Um, so we need to compute where, like, the initial y position should be, and then we need to iterate through the, or like through the lines, and adjust y when we draw the next line. So we draw each line separately. So if we go back here, we want to draw this line um, at this y position here. We always want to make sure that the text is in the middle, but that's quite easy to do uh, based on just the width, uh, simply. And um, yeah, then we just need to adjust y. So after we've drawn this line, we adjust y. So it ends up down here and draws, uh, oh, it's ready to draw the next line. So that's essentially what this function does. And like I've written here, we need to take care of the offset there is in this uh, in this font. So that's also something to consider, but that's uh, fortunately not too difficult. It's just a small offset. So that's what this piece of code does here. Oh, well, we draw the text here, but this is where we apply the offset. Okay, and that's how we draw the text simply. So we do that for the top. We do the exact same thing for the bottom text. And then we just save the image uh, in this folder, memes edited, and we are ready to upload it on Discord like we showed or like we took a look at in the beginning of the video. So yeah, if you want to use this for your own project, go ahead, feel free to grab this script and use it. Uh, but uh, I would also be happy if you gave some attribution by just uh, linking to my YouTube channel or GitHub, that's where I put the code for all of these videos. So just a few remarks here at the end. Um, make sure when you, if you want to use this, make sure just to make an assets folder in the root of your project, make a font subfolder, put the font you want to use in here, 
or specify the uh, like the relevant path for the font. You don't technically have to do this. Just adjust the um, like the uh, the path in here to the font. This is where I specify it. So you can just change these variables if you need to, and then put all the memes in here. Um, and um, yeah, well, you can get the memes quite easily if you go to something like. Uh, imgflip.com and then slash meme generator you can find all kinds of memes in here uh, you can make them yourself yeah but you'll get a watermark down here at the bottom and we also want a very neat way to do it in discord directly uh, so you don't have to do it manually in here and upload it yourself but yeah just uh, find the meme you want let's say yeah well this one or this one and you can just you know right click and save the image or yeah so I've opened a few examples in here in their own tab and uh, you don't have any watermarks, you just have the image itself. So that's one way to do it. You probably know a million ways to find the images you need. I thought I'd just mention it. So, yep. Yeah.